Good afternoon. Um, we have a, a really exciting agenda for you today. Um, before we jump into it, the first thing I want to say is that um, we are going to provide a QR code for all of you at the end of this session. It's the last slide, um, and that will allow you to uh, verify your attendance. So please uh, make sure you wait till the end and, and that you do that. Um, also, I would ask that you all put your phones away um, so that you're paying attention to the content. We have some really uh, great speakers and presenters today, and we want you to get the full benefit of the discussion. So please uh, be mindful of your peers and respectful of the presenters and uh, put your technology away for the discussion. First, um, I want to introduce myself. I haven't uh, had the opportunity to meet uh, many of you. I just joined uh, Villanova School of Business in August of last year. Um, I graduated uh, with an accounting degree from VSB in 1991 and spent um, about 20 years with PwC. And I had a unique experience to start in the financial audit practice. But then over the course of my career at PwC, I was able to work in the, uh, the security uh, consulting practice. So I did um, simulated uh, attack. Uh, and hacking type exercises. I helped companies build security programs. I did process and compliance type consulting work. Um, I was a partner there in the advisory practice as well as the audit practice. And then I had a unique opportunity um, where a client came to me and they said, we'd love for you to be our chief information officer. And I said, why would I ever want to be a CIO? And they said, because you understand the business, you understand the financial statements, you understand the accounting that drives the financial statements, and we think you're uniquely positioned to help take our IT organization from a reactive technical group to one that's business facing and relevant and can help us manage risk. So I took that uh, leap as a partner at PwC. I joined a uh, medical device company as CIO. I went through a major acquisition and led that transition. Uh, I most recently helped a company through a Chapter 11 reorganization. Um, and I guess what I'm, when I step back from it, uh, and then I, I left that organization, and I, I'm now a full-time uh, faculty member in the Accounting and Information Systems Department. And so, uh, my career has kind of come full circle, and I'm kind of back where I started, and I'm, I'm really lucky to get the opportunity to be in front of you today and, and to be part of the VSB accounting program and to be able to share um, the wisdom that I think I've accumulated over the years. Um, but I think the thing that was most um, revealing to me when I stepped back and looked at my career as a CIO was that, you know, when I left um, PwC, I never thought that I would use accounting again, but I found that I actually used it more than I ever th ever did before, right? I had to manage budgets, I had to optimize spend, I had to help the company grow the top line, I had to help the company save money, and um, that knowledge of accounting differentiated me as a professional, and it put me in a unique position with peers at the company, and um, it was a real difference maker uh, and built some really lasting relationships with senior executives and the board of directors and the audit committee because um, I was able to do that. And so I, I want to share as much of that as I can. And, and hopefully that starts today with being able to share with you what's possible. And I think a lot of people think of accounting as a profession. I did. But what I've learned is it's actually a skill set that you apply to so many different things. It, it unlocks possibilities and opportunities, and it let, it's, it's literally the language of business, right? It's a skill set you need to be able to do any job role in the business world. You have to fundamentally understand accounting. And so what we want to share with you today is we want to open your minds, and we want you to be able to think about what's possible and we want, we've got an, an incredibly talented group of people that, we've, that have volunteered their time because they care and they want to be here to share with you what's possible and they want to share the evidence that they took and what um, forks in the road they took so that you can explore for yourself and kind of look in your own mirror and say, what do I want to do? Uh, but our, our one ask is that you keep an open mind 
and that you don't assume that accounting's boring, that it's a desk job, that it's only audit, that it only requires a CPA, right? That there's only one path. There's so many different paths, and the theme of this meeting and this session today is to explore what's possible, um, and let's go to our objectives for, for the session. We want to showcase different accounting career paths. Um, we want to talk to you about how our curriculum is evolving to meet the changing world that we live in, and we're going to highlight three new electives that we're introducing in the fall that we're going to talk about in a fair amount of detail. And then, most importantly, we want to provide time for you to connect with the panel members, with the instructors for these new electives, with the faculty from accounting to be able to talk about your questions and to explore what's possible. The agenda is pretty aggressive. There's a lot to cover. We're going to try to keep it moving. After this introduction, we're going to go directly into the panel conversation. Um, we're going to have about a 30-minute conversation around the electives and what's possible there. Um, we have a five-minute video at the end that will give you kind of a capstone of, of the discussion and uh, explore some of the avenues that you can take in terms of an accounting skill set driven career. Uh, and then we'll finish with time to connect. So why we're here, um, just as big picture context, right? So the world is changing every single day, right? Regulations are being introduced. Climate change is affecting every business and regulations are going to emerge related to that. <laughs> Cybersecurity threats are being introduced. Artificial intelligence, right? You all heard about ChatGPT. It's just the beginning. And all of these changes are affecting every single business. Every company is becoming digital. Every business is going through change. And at, at the foundation of that change is accounting, right? You have to be able to have those accounting skills and capabilities. But more importantly, you have to be able to think strategically. You have to work in teams. You have to be able to problem solve. You have to be able to think critically. And so these are the kinds of things that we're going to focus on and talk about more as we build the curriculum and as we build the future for you together, um, we think are important. And, but most importantly, all of this change opens up paths, multiple paths, multiple diverse paths. We couldn't possibly map them all out for you. It's, they're, they're limitless. And you know, one of the hardest things we had to do was select a panel here that we thought um, could represent the best opportunities for you to be um, aware of. And we had to tell some people no, because we had so many great people that raised their hand and said, we want to get in front of uh, the VSB uh, students and talk about what we did. So um, we're going to pivot now to the panel conversation and really use this as a real platform to talk about what's possible from a career perspective. So I'm going to first turn it to Claire. And I'm going to ask each of the panel members to introduce themselves, talk about their career journey, right? What, what did their path look like? How did accounting contribute to that success? And we're going to go through each of the panel members first, and then I'm going to ask some more questions from there. So Claire? Is this on? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So as Professor Roach said, I'm going to tell a little bit about my story. Um, I'm not going to talk about the penguins at the bottom. I'll cover that in the networking session. Um, but I'm going to talk about my story and and see kind of you know, some of it I think you'll relate to, especially because my story starts when I was sitting in your chair uh, when I came into Villanova and um, just a few years ago and knew I wanted to be a business major. Um, I knew that much. Um, and I decided early on that accounting was going to be my major, um, not because I wanted to be an accountant. I had no idea what I didn't know about being an accountant at that point in time. I actually wanted to go to law school. And I just had the understanding uh, from those around me that, um, that accounting was the best basis for business that you could get. Um, so that's how I proceeded through my first three, few years of Illinois in the business school. And, didn't really think twice about my major, but uh, when I got to my, um, despite me wanting to go to law school, I went through an internship program um, at whatever big four firm, uh, PwC at the time, and actually decided I liked working, 
and I liked business. And I <coughs> did a total 180 and decided not to go to law school. Um, I still wasn't exactly sure probably what an accountant was, or at least looking back on it, I, I don't think I fully understood uh, what it was doing for me. Um, but it actually, I found it to be way more interesting than I ever thought, even for my classes. Um, and I thought it was a great place to start a career. That's all I knew. I didn't necessarily know five years ahead, 10 years ahead at that time, but it felt like a pretty good place to start a career. Um, and truly, you know, as I left Villanova and graduated and started full time in that same field, it, it truly was an incredible opportunity. And you know, I'll always say the big four is not the only place to go, but but that was a great opportunity because it allowed you to work in a somewhat safe team environment, allowed you to see a whole bunch of different industries inter interface um, with corporate professionals and executives that in general wouldn't have the opportunity to do so uh, coming right out of school. Um, so the big four experience itself is not for, for everyone, but, but I will say generally accounting careers uh, offer more opportunities for structured development coming out of school. Uh, whether you go into a, a corporation or a smaller firm or, or a big four firm. Um, and still, to be clear, even in my early days of work, I wasn't clear about what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I didn't think I was destined to be a partner in a big four firm. And I wasn't stressed about it either um, because I was learning so much and I was enjoying it and I knew, I truly knew that there was a lot of places I could go from there. And sure enough, you know, a few years later, opportunities started to present themselves and I wasn't seeing myself there forever, so I started to consider other opportunities in kind of a corporate setting. Um, but I also was considering the FBI and other opportunities. I ultimately decided to, to take a corporate path and I joined a startup uh, with just a few years of experience and, and it was, in that, joining a small company, um, once again, demonstrated the value in having an accounting degree. I was hired as an accountant, but in a small company, I got to do finance, I got to do cash flow forecasting, I was implementing a system within six months, um, and it, it was really some of the problem solving skills that I learned and developed through my education, and through um, my, my few years at PwC, which presented me the opportunity to take the role and also gave me the confidence to kind of take on all these different roles within a, within a small company. Um, the accounting group was made up of accountants that did everything from IT um, to forecasting to financial analysis because in a small company environment, you need jack of all trades, right? But you generally need first and foremost accounting skills. And, and so that was why the CFO hired four accountants um, to handle everything from operations to finance in that world. Uh, for me, it was an incredible experience. Um, the company ended up being a victim of the dot-com boom, which you guys may be reading about in textbooks at this point, um, in 2002, and I decided to join a larger company and um, because I wanted that experience as well. So I joined Sunoco, where I spent 13 years of my career. Um, and Sunoco was a company um, where um, the value of my accounting degree became apparent once again. The company uh, had a tradition of hiring accountants that went into operational roles and financial analysis roles. And it was there as well as sales roles and, and such. So sure enough, I spent 13 years there and had about six or seven different roles, ultimately uh, having the opportunity to be the CFO. Um, and yeah, the, the key role that led me to that was doing investor relations, which many people think are full of finance or PR people, but you need to understand financial statements to be able to explain them to investors, um, because it is a fact that I go to business. So you know, ultimately I left Sunoco seven years ago and joined a newly formed investment company um, as a partner and CFO, uh, which is actually based, you know, my office is down the street in Brimar. The first thing I did was, as newly formed, was hire two senior level accountants before we even opened the doors. Because I didn't know what we had to do, actually, as a function. We didn't know what we didn't know. But I knew I needed people with problem solving skills that had the ability to uh, deal with banks and investment bankers and IT people and operational people. 
And I had the best chance, honestly, of doing that by hiring uh, people that have been working in accounting for 10 years, which is what I did. And today, our function is filled with um, six accountants that do everything from um, help the deals get closed and do IT, cybersecurity, cash management, forecasting, um, and generally just help me problem solve um, anything that comes down the pike. Um, so I'll, I think I've gone over probably. So I'll stop there um, and turn it over to Bonnie. Um, and happy to address any of those details in the networking session. Thank you, Claire. My name is Bonnie Johnson, and I am going to rely on some prompts when I get to halfway because I've been told that I can tell a story in a meandering way. And so the way that I'm going to approach this is to really just tell you my story. I believe that I have worked in, I don't know, maybe like three or four different types of accounting roles, so I can really give you some broad experience. First and foremost, I am from this area. Born and raised in West Philadelphia, or as Will Smith says, West Philadelphia, born and raised. Um, in any event, I went to, I may be the only panelist that has not attended Villanova. I went to Temple for undergrad, and when I went to Temple, I went into the business school undeclared. Uh, prior, I didn't know what I wanted to do as a major. I didn't know I wanted to own a business. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I've had family members who've owned businesses, and I have an uncle who always would say, or I had an uncle who always would say, a nine to five is for suckers. You need to make yourself rich. Don't make somebody else rich. Don't listen to that uncle. Sometimes a nine to five serves its purpose uh, to get you to your goal that you're trying to achieve. So I was in accounting one, similar to what you all are doing, the mandatory accounting class, thinking this is not something I'm ever gonna want to do. Uh, and the professor pulled me aside one day and I thought I was going to get in trouble from, for, you know, reading a book or doing something that I shouldn't be doing in class. And she said to me, this is really easy for you. And I just want you to know that it doesn't come easy for everyone. Like, there are some people who they are intelligent so they can catch on. But for you, this really seems like drinking water or breathing. And I said, hmm. Maybe that should be the major, because at the time I was most interested in what would get me in and out of school fairly quickly. So I did pick accounting as my major. I also started with a big four public accounting firm. Surprise, surprise, it was PwC. Back then it was big six, if that gives you any indication of what my age is. Um, so I started with PwC in the audit department, worked through audit, made my way up to manager. By the time I was an experienced manager, my son was a toddler. I had one child. He's Anyway, um, I'm still raising them. I, um, I made my way up to uh, manager and I had all kinds of different experiences. I worked on DuPont, I worked on Roman Haas, I worked on Conrail, so very, uh, many different industries. And right before I left, I was getting exposure to various different partners because this is where they figure out, are you going to stay, are you going to become a senior manager because they're not going to promote you to senior manager. Back then, unless they thought you had a shot at making partners. So it's like, you've been working on big jobs, let's get you out on some small jobs so you can meet you know, other partners. And I did that um, and really, really um, enjoyed the experience of working in nonprofit and sharing this for a reason. So when I left PwC, because my son was a toddler and I didn't feel like I was doing as well as I would like to, um, when I left there, one of the partners helped me get the job that I ended up getting, which was at Roman Haas. This was right after Sox, Sarbanes Oxley went into effect and uh, managers had to sign certifications on their financials and the information that they were reporting. So a big part of my job was chasing these managers down and getting these certifications, uh, as well as working on the worldwide fluctuation analysis, which is basically like the numbers were this in December and they're this in March, and that's a big swing and why. So that was a, a big part of my job. And while I was working there, I was bored. I was very bored, and I wasn't feeling 100% fulfilled. It's a public company, and so we had to prepare for quarterly things and the SEC filings and all kinds of things, but I just didn't feel fulfilled. And in my private life, I was doing a lot of work with nonprofits. So I was a treasurer for my local NAACP chapter. I did uh, accounting work for my church. I was doing all kinds of things that I wasn't getting paid for, and I was thinking, you know, not just for our profit motive, but I was thinking a lot of these organizations could use like a real paid accountant. And that's where I got the idea to start my practice, which was Johnson CPA Services. 
And I grew that practice through word of mouth, essentially did it for 14, 15 years. And by the time it was all done, I started with faith-based clients. And by the time it was all over, I had every kind of nonprofit you could think of. I had arts and culture. I had, of course, a faith-based one stay. I even had a couple of for-profit clients that family members are pushy. And when they have businesses, they want you to do their work. So I did all of that and was looking for a new opportunity. I think I'm about to get a three-minute warning. So anyway, I um, thank you five minutes. I'm going to wrap up. Was looking for a new opportunity because one of my largest clients, which represented about 30% of my practice at the time, um, was going to go with a less expensive option. Fine. So I was faced with the choice: What do you do now? Are you going to like fill that back in, or do you want to try something different? So I decided to pivot. I was in a school, a, a different school, again Drexel, for my executive MBA at the time, and decided to sell my practice to a larger one. And I went on to work with her. So that's where you see COO and Director of Accounting Sur Services at J. Miller and Associates. And was looking forward to um, perhaps in a couple of years buying that practice from the, uh, the principal there. Um, she decided not to retire. We grew the business. And again, different experiences, all nonprofit in that, in that organization. So I came from PwC, which was you know big for Fortune 500 public companies, and then I did some nonprofit, and then I went to a chemical company, and then had my own practice, all nonprofit, and then did nonprofit for another organization. And currently, as I wrap up, I am <laughs> AVP and controller at Intel, and Intel is an organization that provides certification to international medical graduates that want to practice in the United States. And so before they can begin to provide medical care or their residencies here in the States, they have to get the Intel, the Intel certification, which essentially ensures that they have clinical skills and are also able to communicate well in English. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, you can read the fun facts, and we can talk about that during the break. Uh, and I will turn things over to Megan. So thank you for patience. Thanks, Bonnie. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Schmidt. I graduated from Villanova in 2002, and unlike my fellow panelists, I was not an accounting major. Um, I transferred into the business school from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and took my first accounting course uh, the fall semester of my sophomore year, which happened to coincide with my soccer season. And I must have missed the first day of what is a debit and what is a credit and how does that impact the asset and liability accounts and proceeded to get a C in accounting. Um, the professor at the time would tell me, hey, Frawley, we can meet outside for office hours. They're outside of VSB um, where I take my smoke breaks and I can help you learn debits and credits. So needless to say, I did not take him up on an offer and I ended up being a finance major. Um, I grew up outside of New York City and my entire four years at Villanova, I was heading back to New York and I was going to work on Wall Street and I was going to be an investment banker. And then 9 11 hit my senior year in college and nobody was hiring finance majors at that time. Um, the only people that were actually recruiting on campus was the big four accounting firms. So I got hired um, by PwC in their disputes analysis and investigations practice. Honestly, not knowing what I was doing, I just knew I had a job and a paycheck, and I was making my way back to New York City. Um, so I have been a forensic accountant since September 30th, 2002, which is my start date at PwC. Um, I have been a team member of some of the largest um, and most historic frauds that I investigated um, with PwC and now at Alex Partners. Um, so when I started at PwC, I was a part of the WorldCom investigation team um, where we identified $7.7 billion of fraud. Um, I worked with a law firm um, who hired us to be their forensic experts. And then I went on to live in Birmingham, Alabama for nine months uh, where we did the Health South investigation and identified $2.7 billion of fraud. Um, and since then, I have you know, traveled the globe doing investigations into financial reporting issues on behalf of multinational corporations. Um, I had the good fortune to be part of the first consulting team that arrived at the business of Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities the day after he turned himself into the FBI. I um, spent six months liquidating that business, uh, working alongside the FBI, 
and ultimately testifying against the five employees in his business that helped him um, undertake the fraud. Um, so if you're asking yourself what a forensic accountant is, uh, as I did even after I had my job in 2002, um, forensic accountants get brought in after there's a known issue, right? So we're getting brought in to leverage our accounting skills, leverage data analytics, investigation skills, to investigate something that happened after, uh, which is different from auditing, uh, which is more proactive. Um, and so I quickly realized that I, I loved being a forensic accountant when I was working on the Health South matter, um, and realized that if I wanted to make a career out of that and become a partner, no matter where I ended up, um, I needed to actually get an accounting degree. So I suffered for three whole years. Um, I went to night school, working full time, while training for the New York Marathon, I would not advise doing all that at once. Um, went back and got my degree in accounting at night in New York while working full time on a stock option backdated case. Um, and I wish I had done it differently, and I think my husband would say the same, um, who suffered with me. Um, but it's been a really exciting career. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, and when I run into like, my classmates from Villanova, they're like, are you still doing the forensic accounting? And I'm one of the few people that have actually you know, stuck with the career that they started with outside of school. Um, so I'm really fortunate to have literally walked into a job that I was not anticipating would be so great. And that I would love it. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Renner. I'm a director in the deals practice at PwC. Not to disappoint, I am still at the big four, unlike my former presenters who have started their careers there and moved on. But I had an interesting career there in that I started in the audit practice um, coming out of Villanova. I, I graduated <coughs> in 2011. I studied accounting, finance, and international business while I was here. And I went to the you know, sort of typical career path of starting in the, in the audit group. Um, but in doing so, I, I knew that that was a great place to start my career, to learn, to learn how to analyze a company. Um, I, I worked uh, on two public company audits, uh, and I, I knew that although I wanted to start there, I wanted to, to move on and, and do something else. And I had the opportunity to intern with PwC in their deals practice. So I had a bit of exposure to seeing that there are other paths to an accounting degree aside from just going to an audit or tax or a big four. Um, and, and I knew that's somewhere I wanted to, to move into. So after three years, I transitioned into the deals group. And what the deals practice does is we help advise our clients who are going through transaction, transactions, mergers and acquisitions, uh, whether it be on the buy side or the sell side. We help them to look at the assets they're looking at buying and selling. And, and through PwC, we do it through a variety of, and we do it through a variety of, of fields, um, not just from a financial and accounting perspective, we have HR professionals, IT, operations, um, technical accounting, there's, there's a number of different areas that we help our clients. Uh, where our focus is the financial due diligence practice. So I, I'm working in um, financial due diligence and deals um, uh, for the last eight years, and I, I help my clients to really understand the financials of the companies that they're looking to buy or sell. And what that means is we are taking the, the detailed records of um, a, a company, we're going through them, we're understanding you know, where are the value drivers, what does this mean, and we're, we're unpacking the earnings of that business so that we can help advise our clients on what they should be including in their financial models, what the purchase price should be, what other important um, metrics are and KPIs. And the way that my accounting comes into play here is that, you know, if I think back to what my accounting skills have given me, it's how to really understand and analyze a business and a set of financials, and what really makes up those financials, and how do they work together? How do I think about what's happening in an income statement related to a balance sheet? And what does that mean for the overall perspective of the business? When I look at the earnings of a business, how am I thinking about that from the perspective of, okay, what's true earnings? What are true cash flows? And what's really some accounting-wise that's maybe happening because of the way they reported certain things. And I think about a lot of the interactions that I have with my clients, um, who, you know, one of which are private equities, for example, and, and maybe they've studied finance, but don't really appreciate, you know, the underlying movements of the financials of the business, and, and how, using my accounting background, I've been able to advise them and help them really understand and, and make sure that they're getting um, a good purchase price and a good value for, for the companies that they're looking at. So we, as deals professionals, help our clients from that perspective, from making sure they're understanding the, the financial earnings of the business, 
but also helping them think about the, the, the financial profile and what's important to the management teams, what are KPIs that they're looking at, how uh, is this business going to look going forward, um, and a number of other things. And it's really interesting for me to work in transactions because I think that one of the things I enjoy the most about it is that every deal is a bit different. So even though I'm doing a lot of the same analyses, I'm helping you know, my clients in, in, in similar ways, even if I'm working on a deal in the same industry, uh, two, two, no two companies are the same. You know, we work with, we look at small mom and pop targets who maybe have one person from a small CPA firm running their entire books and you know, maybe they're not audited so we provide some challenges there. And then we work on uh, larger public companies, car belts, um, where there's their you know, audited financials that are put forth publicly. Um, and, and you can imagine there's a number of different, uh, different things that you see going between the two. But even so, you know, each unique deal presents a challenge, and I think that that's something that, for me, has been very interesting, is, is also to think about, you know, relying on my, having to understand the underlying accounting of, of a certain company, but really, what does that mean for the business going forward, and what does that mean for the value that it, it can drive for my client? Uh, during my career at PwC, I, I worked on a number of transactions, um, you know, ranging from, from million to, to billion dollar deals, I've done a lot, um, primarily in the industrial products, consumer markets, and a bit of aerospace, aerospace and defense space. Um, but I have the opportunity to walk across, work across different industries, to work with many different clients, to work in different areas, and to, to explore those options and, and move around as, as I want. Um, I also had the opportunity with PwC to work um, in the PwC Germany office for two years, so I got to see what deals were like from an international perspective. And you know, I'm returning back to, to PwC in the U.S. I, I've now become a, a key contact for a lot of cross-border deals, especially with Germany and Europe, um, because I have that background there. So I think one of the things that I found is, even though I maybe went the traditional Big Four route, that there are a multitude of options, even at the Big Four, with an accounting degree that, that can be applicable and that um, can be interesting to someone. And, and you know, audit was a great place to start, um, but I'm very happy I moved into the deals practice and I, I've had a lot of very interesting experiences while being there. Yeah, thank you. Those are great, great takes. And I guess as I, I reflect on what each said, there's kind of a common thread that, that runs through it, right? That um, there's everyone, uh, started in different places, right? No one ended up where they started. Uh, everyone branched in different ways. Um, I heard a few say, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, right? I honestly sometimes <laughs> ask myself that, right? So I think it's not unusual for people to start a career and be a little uncertain. But I think the takeaway that I think you should all think about is that there's no one path, right? Where you start um, doesn't have to be where you finish, and I think being open to the possibilities is important. Um, so the question I want to ask the panel to, to think about and reflect on is, if you put yourself in the shoes of, of the students that are in front of us here, right, and you know what, now what you know, what advice would you have for students that are thinking about, you know, some haven't picked a major yet, some may have, but they're considering, you know, is it the right one or are there other paths? What, what advice would you have for, for these students as they think about where they want to go, reflecting on what you've learned <coughs> over the course of your careers? Start with Claire. Sure, so I probably touched on this a bit, but I, the first thing I tell college students, high school students, you know, my daughter just graduated with a nutrition degree, the, the same message that um, whether you know, whether you think you know what you want to do or not, just think about the path that gives you the most options. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be a triple major or even a double major, um, but just be thoughtful about um, getting the most experience or perspective because um, I'm not somebody who thinks you need to know what you want to be doing five or 10 or 15 years from now, um, or even three years from now. But your best, um, I think your best approach is to think about that um, next spot as that which will give you a good landing spot to, to think about um, you know, where you fly from there. Um, 
And then beyond that, I think we touched on a bit, it's, it's accounting is a great major. Obviously, we're here to advocate that because um, there are so many building careers that you can get to. But I do, I think the professor said that this is on, as well as others. I really think a lot of colleges about learning skills. Um, and I, when I think about what I learned, I don't remember everything about the technical accounting and intermediate accounting, sorry, Dr. Gordon, um, that I learned. But I remember um, what I developed with problem solving skills, um, you know, working through issues, you know, Christina touched on trying to work through and understand financial statements and the relentless pursuit of an answer. And, and there are some of the skills that you're developing. So if, for those of you that feel like accounting is too hard, um, think about it as you're developing skills that are gonna be really useful uh, for you uh, for the rest of your career. So I agree with everything that Claire said. I would also add to that, don't worry, uh, or emphasize the part about don't worry if you don't really know for sure. Before I went to Temple, I was originally considering veterinary school and interviewed some vets and found out that in at least the Philadelphia area, most a, lot, a big part of their job was euthanizing cats, and cats are my favorite animal, and I didn't think I could handle that emotionally, so I couldn't do it. Then I was gonna be a psychologist, and I changed my mind about that as well. Um, and so ultimately landed with accounting, knowing that I wanted to start a business and thinking that accounting would be a good foundation for that. In my mind, uh, back to my dad was a chef, so in my mind I thought, well, we'll open a family restaurant, and he'll do all the cooking, and I'll be able to watch the accountant with the books, or at least know that the accountant is not like, doing something they shouldn't be doing, so I'll understand at least enough about that. And from what you heard about my career, I didn't end up doing any of those things. But all of the things that I did um, were very fulfilling. What I love most about what I do in non a nonprofit space is helping others. When I was working uh, for Roman Hospital, a great company, great people, I just wasn't feeling fulfilled. Like I wanted to make a difference. Um, and so what I do now gives me that opportunity. And don't think of accounting in terms of, oh, it's just this complex math. You don't need to understand calculus. Like, I don't know if you need much more past statistics, really, um, to understand the math of it. Most of it is a language. It's about communicating and giving useful information um, to management leaders so that they can make good decisions, and hopefully being a manager or leader at some point so that you can make those well informed decisions. I agree with all of that. Well said. Um, you know, I think Professor Roach started off with, um, you know, counting as the, the common language of business, and that really, and weaves through what Claire and Bonnie just articulated. Um, I think the skills, you know, the analytical skills, the problem-solving skills are transferable. Um, I work at a <coughs> consulting firm where we have a forensic accounting practice, we also have a bankruptcy consulting practice, we also have a traditional management consulting practice. Those practices all do different things. The most in-demand skill set that gets asked for across the firm are because you have to know accounting. I came to Villanova as a mechanical engineer. I was supposed to work in the space program. Look at me now. I'm in the business school and I'm in the forensic space. And the luxury that I want to share with you, and I'm, I'm a big believer about paying it forward, is I got involved in the forensic accounting space at PwC. There was only three of us in 1990 when we first started. And I was the low person in the team. So I did all the work from the ground up. By the time I retired, our group was up to 1,000 people just in the US. So from that perspective, that gives you a sense of the demand for what's there. But the opportunities are countless. Many of the people that have worked on our team have gone on and worked for the US government and have had incredibly stellar careers for the US government. Some of them have gone on to the corporate world and have done incredibly successful in the corporate world. So it's not an end spot, it's a beginning spot. And the goal of the class through the selective is to give you an introduction as to how to think through case studies, how to work on real day problems like FTX is one of them we're gonna talk about in class, and how to continue to leverage that and build your skills because at the end of the day, I will, I will assure you, it'll make you more conversant and my big phrase is more relevant, especially during the interview process as you go forward in your career paths. 
So I'll be around later if you want to talk about it and work some more. But uh, Pat, that's my short story. Thanks, Manny. I'm going to go to the video. My name is Sophie Simone, and I'm currently getting my master's in data engineering and analytics at Brown University. I'm going to talk about the Brown I'll be starting at PwC in the fall in investigations and forensic practice. I entered this practice last summer and it was an incredible opportunity to build up this new career for myself and friends of the county. I worked on two anti-corruption and bribery projects and a claims project involving a major lawsuit through my invention. One of my projects involved a potential bankruptcy fraud, where I was tasked with looking for inconsistencies in financial statements and investigating whether this company had any clear incentives or opportunities to commit fraud. I got to work side by side with partners and lawyers throughout this process and learned so much about the intricacies of forensic investigations. Being an accounting major provided me the foundation I needed to analyze the company and understand the investigation, and it was great to see topics I learned in the classroom come to life. For any student considering majoring in accounting, know that there are so many doors that open for you if you have an accounting degree, and that the knowledge you learn will help you succeed in any career. Next up, Bob. Oh, cool. I got to check. Hold on. I, my thing is, I've been in cool. I've been in the deal space for 40 years, and I can't talk by sitting down, and I can't talk behind something up here too. So I got to kind of walk around. No, you can stay. You can stay. No, 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 no. We're all good. No, we are fine. I have been teaching here for 20 years. Okay, more than 20 years. Okay. And when I originally was going to start it here, the plan was this was a second career. Because I had been in the accounting profession for a long time, 20 years too. And if you take 20 plus 20, it equals old. I know. So let's just leave that back. But I've been in the accounting profession for 20 years already, and I was going to become a professor. That was the goal, and I was going to do that. And well, what happened was I really couldn't get out of the transaction in the deal space because it kind of gets in blood and it, it, in case you can't tell I'm kind of a type A um, and it gets in your blood so effectively it kept my day job it's because I'm still not just I work here part-time I've been teaching two classes a semester for a long time senior level accounting classes my day job is I work for Susquehanna Growth Equity Partners which is a well we're under the umbrella of Susquehanna International Group down at Balakin and I think we're like the world's largest global, world's largest options trading firm. Okay, I think that's what we are. But we are a private equity firm inside of that. What I do is I run all the due diligence in addition to a bunch of other stuff in there. And what we are, a private equity firm, is we make investments in companies, we buy companies, and then we basically hopefully fix them up and we sell them at a later date. That's what we do. And you can explain it differently too. Um, a friend of mine's uh, son was in elementary school or whatever it was, and they had, what do your parents do? Okay, what do your parents do for a living? And he said, hey, you know what? First part, that one guy gets up there and says, oh, my dad's a fireman. And then one guy gets up there, one kid gets up there and says, oh, my dad's a doctor. And then his son gets up there and his son says, my dad gives money to people he doesn't trust and he hopes he gets it back. And that's kind of what we, in a way, what we are. And so what the diligence process is, is any time there is money on the line, you know, people, uh, you can't necessarily trust everybody. You get, so what we do is we have to validate everything that all the people are telling us. So effectively, my role here is really falls into really three or four different things. Every company we get, I have to look at from a front end and say, are the numbers good? Are the numbers solid? Is the company is what they say is? Are there any accounting anomalies in there? Are there any accounting anomalies in there that we really need to strip out, some financial engineering, things like that? You can't possibly know what those are unless you know what those, how the accounting thing works in the first place. So we look at new companies coming in. And the next thing, uh, uh, Again, effectively, the bigger, other bigger piece is when we get back, we get them ready for sale on the outside. That's kind of the role we have, and what I want to do is I want to bring that all into a class. Because one of the things I even do now is when we get stuff, and when we have things in, and I get into something really, really cool I see, I bring it into the class I, I already teach now. Um, but it's a little bit harder because I work most of the time on deals, and when you try to bring something into a cost accounting classes, they don't come along that often. That, but we do that, okay? 
So let me talk about the class I want to do. And what I'm really trying to do in this class is to, to basically take all this out, is I want to kind of explain what is the deals process? How does the deals process work? What is the accountant's role in it? Okay, and what are the key accounting skill sets? And do they make this spoiler alert on that is it's a big one, okay? Just so you know, it's a lot of stuff that we have to do. What is that? And the other thing I want to try to do is, is this for everybody? You know, make sure everybody knows is this for them or not. So I want to give them an understanding of how exactly the space works because I can tell you I love what I do, and but not every day. Okay, I love what I do most days, but not every day. Most days. But it's not for everybody, everybody, because I'll give you an example of how I even got in there. Um, and this is kind of the nature of the beast. I actually started at PwC as well. And I, I know it's a broken record. I started, at least I started at Charlotte Office at PwC, not up here, because I went to UNC, okay, undergrad account at UNC. And, and in my class, I talked trash forever in my class, I, ever since I started. And then I stopped for some reason in like 2016. I don't know why, I just did. Okay, because I got slaughtered. Okay, but I did that, and I worked in, in public accounting, and I got out of that, and I had an opportunity to help get an idea. Of it, okay, and the thing is, when I got in there, it said we better basically get this done. You know, I thought I had six months. Well, the day I got in there, it said you don't have six months; you have two. So you run into a lot of things with a really, really short fuse. So what I want to do right here is I want to basically say, what are the transactions? What are they? About? IPOs, carbons, all that. I want to talk about the role. What I have down the side, that is actually what a virtual data room is up there. And if you look by hand, there's a zillion files behind all those kind of things here. Uh, the QOE process we'll talk through, and that is a whole different side of accounting other than audit that basically says this is what's actually behind the numbers. So effectively here, I just want to again introduce what's in the deal, what deals are, and what the accounts roll in. And again, everything there will kind of move on, and uh, I'll be around afterwards to wrap as well. Cool. Um, Pat, they may not know in 2016 uh, Watson, that Villanova would be North Carolina. Carolina. When I graduate, I'll correct the PWC and Apple Markets and South Advisory Services. For those that didn't track the title, so Sophie Simone, who was the first video, and uh, Emma Watson, who uh, was in this one, are both current uh, Masters of Accounting students, um, so they're in their fifth year, and both interned in these areas, and they've uh, they've learned a ton, and they're they're applying a lot of that in class now, and so we were excited to have them. Uh, they both uh, could not be here tonight to join us, but they wanted to uh, share their uh, regards, and, and they will answer any questions any of you have separately. You can reach out to them. So now we're going to pivot to the digital course, which I'm going to uh, instruct, and um, we can go right to it. So what I um, talk about all the time with respect to digital is every company in the world is becoming a digital company, which means they're leveraging process data and technology, uh, not only to run the core business, but to grow the top line. Um, so you know, companies are investing millions of dollars in solutions that are designed not only to promote uh, efficiencies, but to grow revenue, to expand into new markets, to use data, uh, and insights in a way that's going to inform their next strategic uh, move. And there's so many third-party studies that I can't name them all that say the success rate uh, of these digital investments that, that exist is less than 20%. 
So companies are spending millions of dollars and less than 20% of those initiatives are successful. And so then the question is, well, why is that the case? And the reason is nothing to do with technology. It's all about leadership, planning, people, relationships, communication, critical thinking skills, ability to connect the dots, ability to work in teams, right? Ability to think ahead, um, all the strategic and consulting related skills that um, we really want to invest in and, and make sure that we're delivering that to you as students. And so, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've created a Masters of Accounting class uh, related to digital and cybersecurity. We're bringing um, a portion of that content into this elective. And so we're going to explore what is digital transformation. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. What is that? How do you control it? What are the financial considerations associated with it? What are the ethical and privacy considerations associated with it? Um, things like robotic process automation, Internet of Things, right? All these different technologies we're going to expose you to them. Um, our Masters uh, of Accounting class today Actually, I just left there, was at Microsoft. So we were in Malvern at the Microsoft Technology Center um, educating the students on the different solution options available. So we're going to think about how we bring some of that experience to this elective going forward. Um, we're going to take you through what does digital transformation look like? What is a program? What does success look like? What drives success? How do companies take an idea, plan it, design it, build it, control it, deliver it, uh, and then then fashion? How do you think about financial costs and how those get allocated to digital products and solutions, right? From an accounting perspective, what's the role that the accountant can play? What are the risks and controls that need to be designed and built into these solutions? And then bringing that all together in a case study that we've developed that will allow you to work in teams and begin to start to think in a connected way about how you as students and future professionals in these areas can leverage these solutions. You have a unique opportunity and as you move into the workforce to contribute to moving that 20% success rate significantly up by connecting and bridging you know, technology and business-minded teams that don't work together. Accounting is the glue that connects and bridges those different areas. And so we're gonna build those skills and, and begin to start to introduce that through these electives. And as I said, we, we're probably gonna grow these, right? We, we'll probably offer more, we'll evolve them constantly, we'll get better, we'll learn, we want your feedback. Um, so that's uh, what we're gonna cover as part of uh, the digital program. So I want to thank Manny and Bob uh, for their contributions and, and their time here sharing with you what's in these electives. Um, we're going to go to one last video from Megan, uh, who's a current senior in the accounting uh, department. And uh, she's going to share her internship experience. Um, and she's taking a job in consulting and digital consulting with Accenture in the fall. And she's going to share her story. Hi, my name is Megan and I'm a current senior accounting and analytics major at Villanova. I'm excited to say that I will be working at Accenture after I graduate as a consulting analyst. I'm truly grateful that accounting has helped open up a lot of doors for me in terms of what I want to pursue after graduation. I had known from early on that I wanted to work in consulting and knew that the knowledge of accounting would differentiate me amongst others, but I had no idea that it would help me so much in my career journey thus far. I worked on a digital transformation project for my internship and will continue to pursue projects in digital consulting at Accenture. I wish you all the best in discovering your next future career path and hope that you will consider accounting as your next potential home. Okay. Thanks to Manny and Bob once again. I appreciate your time. And uh, we're going to sort of transition into the last segment of of the session before we get uh, into the, uh, the registration uh, or the attendance verification process and then the networking segment at the end. So, um, so we shared a lot of information with you through this session, right? And it was uh, you know, a lot in a short period of time and honestly we could have went on for a lot longer but you know, we, we, we've got to can limit uh, how much we share with you at one time. And so, but now it's important that we hear from you. So um, we want to listen to your feedback. We want to 
um, create an extension of the Accounting Society. So we've had um, discussions with that group about creating a student advisory council, and that will include some new membership, which we want to help inform our future path in terms of curriculum enhancements. And so uh, as part of the, the attendance verification QR code you'll get uh, at the end, uh, it will take you to a Microsoft form and we're asking if anyone's interested in participating in the Student Advisory Council, uh, you can indicate your interest there. Um, we have leadership opportunities for anyone that's interested, so we'd like to know if you're interested in that as well. Um, we are gonna create some focus groups as part of this, which are gonna concentrate efforts uh, and learn more about things like environmental, social, and governance. Uh, which is climate-related uh, reporting and governance uh, related to things like diversity of the skill composition of companies. Um, we're going to have one on digital and cybersecurity. We're going to have one on deals and forensics, and we will probably add others. So we, we ask that if you have an interest in participating in any of these, that you indicate your interest. We envision uh, bringing in uh, people like the panel members you've heard from, firms and others to share uh, insights on these topics, to hear from you of things you'd like to learn. We want to conduct information sessions like we just did with the cybersecurity and privacy panel last week. That's a, an example of what we want to drive more of through this advisory council. And um, you know, ultimately, we want to make enhancements to curriculum and new, new electives through this process. So we need your voice, and we want your help, and we want to listen. And um, you, know, you are going to help us take you know, the department and, and accounting to the next level. And so we'd love to hear from those that are interested and want to invest the time. So right now, I'm going to go to a closing video that's going to be about five minutes and, and change to sort of capstone everything that you've just heard in terms of you know, the changes in the world, why accounting skills are on, on the increase, um, the different career options and paths that you can take, uh, and then we'll end up with some closing comments in the QR code at the end. So let's go to the video. Career opportunities for individuals with accounting skills are limitless. If you're willing to be curious, ask questions, and think differently. Let's explore the possibilities together. The traditional view of accounting is that it's an occupation, not a skill set. That it's boring. That you have to become a CPA. That there's only one career path in audit. And that there's only a few potential employers. The big four. PwC, ENY, KPMG, and Deloitte. But that view's not accurate, and here's why. The pace of business change is accelerating every day. Companies are becoming more and more global. Regulations are changing constantly. Digital is exploding, including a massive focus on artificial intelligence. And there are more and more threats and risks, including environmental and cybersecurity. All of these changes are increasing the need for deep accounting skills, along with the ability to build relationships, to listen, to think critically, to work in teams, and to be able to consult with clients about solution options to address their business priorities. Areas of change where we see this combination of skills to be most important include <coughs> cryptocurrency and blockchain, accounting for and controlling digital assets, environmental, social, and governance reporting, the process, data, and control supporting disclosures of things like greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption across the supply chain, and diversity information, forensic accounting to support fraud investigations, advising and consulting on the accounting requirements associated with deals, valuing risks that help them to define controls to address cybersecurity and other risk areas, and improving processes, systems, and controls as part of financial and digital transformations that will improve company performance and financial results. To prepare you for this future, our accounting focus is a <coughs> In accounting at Villanova School of Business, you will learn business ethics, financial analysis, data analysis, business process, internal controls, and emerging technologies. You'll also develop leadership skills, problem solving skills, the ability to work in teams, relationship skills, critical thinking skills, the ability to communicate and tell stories that go beyond the data, and consulting skills. 
new skills can be applied in a multitude of different ways to a number of exciting career opportunities. Let's explore each. Auditing involves performing procedures to help verify that financial, regulatory, and compliance information is accurate, complete, and that internal controls are in place and operating effectively. You can focus on audits and advisory services related to financial statements, technology, internal controls, compliance, and environmental, social, and governance reporting. In the tax area, you can help companies establish the company strategy, structure, and technology to optimize taxes. You can also perform tax audit and compliance work. For audit and tax, you will ultimately need a CPA. You can work at a public accounting firm, including the big four, and you can get to work on marketing client names like Coca-Cola, Vanguard, Campbell's Soup, DuPont, and others. From a consulting standpoint, you can get involved with forensic investigation work, deal advisory, digital and cybersecurity advisory work, and financial transformation consulting. You are not required to have a CPA to work in consulting. You can work at public accounting firms, as well as companies like Capgemini, Accenture, McKinsey, Alex Partners, and others. And in corporate roles, you can work in a range of different areas, including financial planning and analysis, treasury and risk management, tax, internal audit and forensic investigations, or in financial management roles such as treasurer, head of tax, controller, or CFO. In corporate roles, you are not required to have a CPA, and you can work at companies like some of our alumni at NASDAQ, Wawa, J&J, Comcast, Goldman Sachs, and many others. We're going to focus more on these three areas. Forensics, deal advisory, and digital, including cybersecurity, are three exciting new focus areas for VSB accounting that are in high demand and do not require CPA, and they represent dynamic career opportunities for you. For each of these areas, we are creating new electives, establishing information sessions and panel discussions, updating existing courses where possible, and creating student focus groups that will engage with faculty, alumni, and outside experts to learn and provide feedback on things we can do to improve your learning experience. To further understand the possibilities, you should talk to people that are already excelling in these exciting accounting career areas. Ask questions. Be curious. Sign up for our new student focus groups. Attend our upcoming events. And lastly, register for our new electives. The career opportunities for individuals with accounting skills are limitless. If you're willing to be curious, ask questions, and think different. If you continue to explore the possibilities with us, we are confident that accounting skills will help position you for an exciting and dynamic future. So, so. Genuinely thank you for your time, your attention. The QR code is, is here for you to check in. If you're interested in, in this focus groups of the Student Advisory Council, please uh, let us know. We'd love your feedback. And I think the most important point is we're here for you. We want you to learn. We want you to grow. We want you to build uh, a foundation here at VSB that's going to take you a long, long way and, and, and differentiate you in the marketplace. And you know whether you choose accounting or, or another major, right? We're confident that accounting skills that you will develop as part of the program that that we have here are going to be a, a key part of that future, uh, regardless. So thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for uh, paying attention throughout and for. Um, being here and, and we'd love your feedback. So all the panel members and instructors are gonna stay in the back of the room uh, and be available for you uh, for any questions you have, to network, to ask questions, be curious, think differently, be open-minded, and thank you. Have a good evening.